Hey, YouTube fans, thanks so much for tuning in. Of course, as always, make sure you spread the word on YouTube for us. Justin. Yeah, you got to like, subscribe, and share the videos. And guys, comment below after you see how many arrows Todd has to fling oh, in this episode to kill all of his turkeys. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting episode of Bowhunter Die. I think we're finally getting to the tail end of these turkeys. I mean, I never thought this I would is say it. this. This is the last of this the turkeys. We're done with year. turkeys. All Brandon, right. correct me if I'm wrong. Done. Brandon says we're done with we're turkeys, done. so we are done. We're this done. is it, the last couple. I won't tell you how many. I, the listen, last few. <laughs> turkey hunting is a lot more fun sometimes than I think than actually watching the hunts themselves. But if you've never hunted turkeys, get out there and hunt them. Justin, before we dive into this episode, tell me yeah. if you've seen anything come across any of our wires. I mean, obviously, we get a lot of emails within the hunting industry. Sure. You seen anything out there that's got you all excited? I don't well, know. I don't know about, about, I don't know about I don't excited, know. but, you know, I think the, you know, recently there was a, a press release, guys, that went out about, you know, Faradine Industries, who, who was the maker of Rage Broadheads, getting a, some sort of injunction through, like, the U.S. Customs oh, to prevent... Stuff. The import of of counterfeit products. I wonder where you're is, going with this. Well, here. it's becoming a huge, huge problem in the archery industry, and a lot of guys don't know about it. But I mean, essentially, you know, products that are designed by you know archery companies that employ yeah. a bunch of people. They you know they engineer them, they prototype them, they patent them, they got to market them, they got salespeople, they got you know they have to pay for this business. And then all of a sudden, somebody over in China, you know, just blatantly rips off their product. Yeah. I mean, it's not even close. It is an exact replica. And then they're essentially smuggling them into the U.S. and selling them through Amazon and through eBay. And people are buying them, you know, for half the price that, right. you know, they, they should be sold for. Well, you're surfing retail. the web and you see some of the, that better pricing. You're thinking, oh, man, these are just, these are like sure. a super special. Guys, it's not a special. I mean, the reality is either someone stole them from somewhere or it's a counterfeit product. And, you know, you think you're getting a better price but really and you might be getting a better price but you're not getting the same quality product that's sure. made by the company. Yeah, I mean, well, not only are you not getting the same quality product, right, which when you think about a broadhead, right, it's the business end of your arrow. It's the one thing that's most responsible for killing an animal that you shoot at. Why take a chance with some sort of cheap, you know, counterfeit right. knockoff? But even more importantly than that, you know, in the bigger scheme of things, I mean, you're taking money out of American businesses. You know, we hear a lot of talk about people saying, you know, we want to, you know, make America great again or we want to support, you know, American businesses and jobs and, you know, everybody turns around and buys these counterfeit products, which essentially are just stealing money from these companies that actually worked very, very hard to, yeah. to build and, and design and market those products. So I think, you know, for me anyways, like in the archery industry, when I saw that come through, I was like, all right, cool. You know, something's starting to be done about this. Hopefully we can bring some more awareness. Oh, I, you know? I wasn't expecting it. Justin's really getting on, on the edge of his chair here with this <laughs> here. Well, hey, well, with, with that being said, let's dive into some exciting turkey sure. hunts and the next time you see a super good price on something you know think twice and make sure it's not a counterfeit product that's for sure Well, what an adventure so far. Leaving for Kansas tomorrow morning. I'm driving out to the hunt club, one of my businesses, and darn truck acts up. Fuel filter light comes on, who knows what. Get reduced engine speed, so I don't know. Luckily, local shop was able to get in there and change my fuel filter. I went and got some new fuel. Uh, I don't know what to say. Hopefully tomorrow, I do not end up stuck on the side of the road somewhere. I got the bow ready to go. I've been shooting. Josh is already mobile and ready to rock and roll. So I am going to uh, basically um, pack up the truck right now, get up at 4 a.m. tomorrow in Kansas. Here we come. Ooh. 
Well, it's Thursday, May 4th, and I'm in the middle of somewhere in Missouri. Uh, we left uh, yesterday. We got packed up and headed out. Uh, it's about a 14 and a half hour drive on our way to Kansas. And so we've been through Illinois, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee. I've been everywhere. I've seen the Ohio River, the Mississippi River. Uh, it just seems like it's just been an endless drive. Uh, so we're getting closer. We're about an hour and a half away from Kansas City where we're going to meet Todd Graff. Uh, thank God we're going to be turkey hunting over the next three or four days. And so my season started out great with the kids. They both killed birds, and then it just ended for me. So I'm taking a ton of grief from them for not killing the turkey. So I'm excited to get out here and, and, and do some good hunting. Mr. Lateness, Mr. Lateness. Not that late. I thought you were a prompt minutes. guy. I'm not prompt. I spent the night in the hotel and got a good night's sleep. No issues, so. Yeah, no that's not what I did. <laughs> since 2 o'clock this morning. Well, so. me leaving at 2 a.m. wasn't exactly the brightest thing in the world, but I'm here. We got birds. We're getting lunch. I don't know about the birds bar. We don't know about the birds bar we'll yet, but we're going to find out. Well, we made it to Kansas. I got the lucky coin right here to find out which one of us is going to be hunting these turkeys first tomorrow between Josh and I. Josh, what are you calling? Come on. I'm calling heads. Heads. Boom. It's heads. Josh. Josh is up first, which means I'm behind the camera. So we're here. We made it on perfect timing. It's 4 o'clock. we got plenty of time to shoot our bows, kind of get dialed in. We're just now going through all our gear, figuring out specifically what we want to bring. We're going to get a little charging station set up here, make sure everything's all charged up and ready for the morning. Otherwise, the weather's finally broke here. They've had some crummy weather uh, passing through this area over the last week. So, I mean, man, it's beautiful out today. So, hopefully, with a little bit of luck, tomorrow we're going to hear some gobbles and we're going to be in some birds right off the bat. That's what I'm hoping for. I, this will be the first year that I ever even attempt to shoot two turkeys in one year. So with a little bit of luck, we're in Kansas. There's a lot of birds, and hopefully it may be the first time ever I shoot two turkeys in one year. That would be impressive. Oh, that's the shot that I want tomorrow morning. First morning here in Kansas, we're all set up. It's just awesome. We're up here on a little ridge, nice little prairie. Got decoys set up, all the cameras are ready. Uh, we're just waiting for them to start thundering and going off, so we're ready to go. One, two, three, maybe four. We 
we sat here for a while. Didn't, didn't hear anything, but we've got a gobbler coming up behind us. It's not far off. He's real close. This is my first Kansas turkey. Beautiful bird, about 10 inch beard. Uh, came into the decoys, got a shot, perfect shot, laid him down. Uh, problem is we've got two other birds behind us over here in this field and we think they're headed this direction. So we're gonna switch up. I'm gonna get on the camera. Todd's gonna get his bow and hopefully we can get a second one. Bow hunter die. We're just gonna chill out and see if some more birds work their way over here, just like the last one. I mean, we were just sitting here. Josh was talking like crazy, you know, but it was fine. And uh, man, we got lucky because he just came in behind us and just hammered it. And then we were like, holy moly. So we grabbed all our stuff and Josh did awesome. So I'm up to bat next. We'll just have to wait to see what happens. We heard a gobble. Doyle's been hitting the calls and sure enough, boom, another one just popped up.
I swear there's always drama when I go bow hunting. This feels like. <laughs> I mean, this thing was eight yards. Shot it, which I thought was a, a really good shot. He immediately went down. We actually were watching him. He relaxed his wings, so we were thinking, you know, good. Went ahead, knocked another arrow. And while I was literally knocking the arrow, <laughs> the next time I look up, the thing's doing a hike out of here. So unfortunately, that second shot was not as stellar as I wish it could have been. I'm not even sure we got the second shot on film. Um, but we did see where he went, and I know I got a perfect pass through um, broadside. And I'm shooting a heck of a broadhead, so I mean, he should be. I mean, those kill zone maxes do the job, so I'm pretty comfortable that he's not going to be far, but we're just going to have to give him some time, just like whitetail on. Feathers are here. Okay. Just know he's 24 from right here. We got him. Look at this. I mean, it's gray and then black and then the, the Rio. I mean, it's beautiful. Dude, I mean, I don't know how in the heck. I don't know if that was the first shot or not. Oh, oh man. What a awesome first day in Kansas. I mean, Josh and I both left our hometowns, you know, yesterday, got into town. I mean, you can't ask for a better day of hunting, period. Josh was up the bat first, had a great hunt, incredible footage. I mean, the bird could not have worked any better. And then we decided once we got his down to go ahead and switch it up and for me to jump in. I jumped into the seat and I'm telling you what, it was in 15, 20 minutes later, we were hitting a few calls and sure enough, boom, this one popped out. This is a beautiful bird. I mean, this Rio has absolutely got beautiful feathers. Um, his beard goes from this light gray to this, this black. I mean, he's just an awesome, awesome bird. I mean, I can't be any more happy. I mean, it was great. It <laughs> just seems like my turkey hunting turns into a little bit of a drama like my first one I shot, but it's all good. I mean, I made, made a good shot, but man, he got up, took off. He just basically came over the ridge and bedded down. Um, but you know what? Here he is. We found him. We got him. Well, Todd, great, great first morning in Kansas, right? I mean, you guys go out, slam two birds right off the bat. Great footage. Yours, Dude. what happened? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's me and turkey, sometimes me and bow hunting just in general. I don't know what the heck happened. I mean, I thought I put that arrow right where I needed to. And I mean, I, and we, and I mean, we saw that he was still alive, and you know, you've seen that before, and then sure. I just figured he was going to expire. And the next thing I know, I mean, he looked like a freaking, I don't know. Track star. A track right. star. I mean, I, think right I, I hurry up, shoot another arrow. That wasn't the best shot, obviously, because I wasn't prepared for that at all. Yeah, then but it, honestly, without that arrow, he may have got away. Yeah, I don't know if that first possible. one would have stopped him good enough. But So now you've got two, two birds on the ground for the season, right? Illinois and your first Kansas bird. Five arrows flung. I'm, I'm <laughs> counting. So we have five arrows released, two birds on the ground. Josh makes a great shot. You know, his bird doesn't go anywhere. So no. day one is kind of out of the way. Guys, before we jump into the rest of Todd and Josh's adventure, uh, last week we were very privileged to have a lot of our partners here in the office for our annual bowhunting.com meeting. Summit. Our annual summit. Our bowhunting.com staff summit, we'll call it. But uh, guys, the first video we're going to see here is from our friend Kurt over at Lumnock. Uh, he sat down with us for a couple minutes in the studio to talk about some new products. So let's check it out now. Hey guys, we're fortunate enough today to have Kurt from Lumnock. Kurt is one of the owners over there. He is in the studio with us, as you can see. Today we're going to talk a little bit about their new lighted knock, which is the HD Orange. So Kurt, tell us a little bit about it. Well, we've been uh, we've been at this for a long time since 1998, and uh, we came out with the Lumnock Orange. The HD Orange is a uh, I don't know is a is a better in, uh, outside in the light sunlight type of color. Sure, that's what it's all about. I mean, we try to take we take pride in being on sear knocks in the daytime. You know, a lot of people say, well, what are you doing hunting at night? You're using a lighted knock. No, we're hunting in the daytime, but you want to see where your arrow goes because 
as a bow hunter, the most important thing is to know where you hit an animal. Yeah, well, absolutely. I think I've been preaching that to people forever, you know, and, and I've told people that, that, that I, you know, just talk to or meet, like, there's no reason any bow hunter out there should not be using a lighted knock unless it's illegal in the state that you, or province or wherever you happen to be hunting. But outside of that, there is zero reason for every person out there to not be using a lighted knock. Like, knowing exactly where you hit that animal is so critical to knowing what to do after the shot, you know, and being able to increase your chances of recovery. And on the plus side of that, if you happen to miss or the arrow goes careening off somewhere, which I literally did this like two years ago, I mistakenly, my release went off when I was at full draw on a deer and I missed it. And the thing went off in the woods somewhere and I had no idea where it was at. Just waited till it got dark and then boom, there's the knock out there. And I went and picked up my, you know, $30 arrow, you know, by we, the time uh, it's arrow broadhead knocked the whole thing. So it saves you money too. We had a TV show down in Texas one time and they killed a, they killed a buck with a crossbow and they're doing the outtakes, you know, and it's getting dark and they couldn't find the dang arrow, you know? And as soon as the light had dimmed down, one of the cameramen goes, look, Johnny, look up in the tree. The arrow had skipped off of something, stuck in the tree, and it was lit yeah. up into a tree. Yeah, but they never would have they seen never that would a million have years never without it. So, guys, the new HD orange, you know, we say it's 30% brighter. It's probably even brighter than that, than the, than the original Loom Knox. But people get confused with that 30% brighter. They think it's 30% brighter than other Knox. No, it's 30% brighter than the last Loom Knock that we made. Which, which was is, pretty much which, the brightest knock on the market which already. Which is two times brighter than any knock that was out there. So, sure. you know, that's we just take a lot of pride in that, you know. So, uh, yeah, definitely. you know, when I, when I watch a TV show, because I watch TV shows in my office, outdoor TV, and, and for a TV show not to use a lighted knock, it's like, what are they scene. doing? Well, everybody Where watches the, the show because they want to see they want to see that impact. I mean, let's you face bet. it, we all kind of you know days off, but as soon as that you know money shots come in, everybody focuses in and they really want to see you know where that arrow goes. And you know, guys, I've been shooting these all spring. Uh, if you remember back to my Illinois turkey that I shot, I mean, it was the first. 15 minutes, you know, of legal light, so it was still, I mean, the sun wasn't up over the horizon yet, and that thing was like a laser beam. Have you ever you know, had that guy in deer camp, though? Have you ever had the guy in deer camp, and he shoots a deer, and you, and you go, where'd you shoot it? And the guy goes, well, I don't know. I don't know where I shot it. Well, yes. with a lit, lit knock, I know with me, because this happened to me when I was a young man, when I was a kid, and my first deer I ever shot with a recurve bow and a wooden arrow, my dad asked me, where'd you hit it, son? I said, I don't know, dad. <laughs> I think I hit it. Well, you know, but but as I've gotten older and I've shooting lighted knocks, that when you that you follow that your you, your eye comes to that lighted knock a lot easier. And a lot sure. of times you can see where the light goes out, and then you'll see the blood. Yeah. You know, it just helps you concentrate a lot better. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, the new HD orange knocks are available for pretty much every standard you know arrow diameter that's that's out there. Uh, Todd and I and the rest of our guys have been shooting them already this spring. They're working great. So we're looking forward to hopefully shooting some whitetails with them come fall. And then Kurt, awesome. you had some awesome turkey footage. Oh, awesome! Yeah, we had a great turkey season. I got to tell you, man, it was, it was amazing. Um, what else we got here? I, this is the Ape. That's what I know. This is our newer product. It's called. It's we call it the Ape, which stands for Arrow Puller Extinguisher. That you know, the reason it was made was to help extinguish crossbow knocks because the crossbow knock stays on a lot more. It's a lot harder to, to uh, disengage from the back of the arrow. But what this was made for is to put it on to the fletching, give it a couple shakes, shuts the knock off. It's good to go. It doesn't index the knock, so you don't have to worry about turning the sure. knock or anything. It's right where it's supposed to be. And, that's, and then it can Very be handy. stored right on the arrow. So it's always there to help turn it right. on. So you can use it as an arrow puller as well. Exactly. For those shooting targets. Yep. So great, great product. Looks like it's available in a couple different colors. You bet. Three colors, pink, green, and orange. We'll get Todd a pink one. Cool. That's his favorite right there. So guys, <laughs> there you have it. We've got Kurt from Loom Knock here in the office. If you guys are in the market for a lighted knock, definitely check them out. They're made right here in Illinois, correct? Yep. Yeah. Gate City. Awesome. Right here in Illinois. So make sure you check them out, guys. Luminock.com. We pledge allegiance to the hunt, to the passion that can only be fed by the endless thrill of the chase. For we are mud-covered souls, bound by no boundaries, and united by the ground upon which we tread. So with rubber on foot, we stalk, we seek, we hunt, rightfully claiming this land in the name of the hunt. Lacrosse Boots, done right since 1897. Good morning guys, it's our last day in Kansas here. We spent the last two days just having a great time here. You know, it's the first time that I've ever hunted 
in Kansas, period. You know, Justin went earlier in the year and had a great hunt in public land. We're actually hunting here with an outfitter. Um, got my stacks all lined up. Josh had an incredible hunt yesterday. I mean, we sat in that blind for I don't know how many hours. Had a nice big bird finally come in, but unfortunately the shot just didn't make the mark. Luckily the bird went unharmed and hopefully he's going to come back today. We didn't spook him too bad. We know exactly what tail feather is missing. <laughs> you know, so we're going to be looking for that bird this morning. Well, sorry for the whispering, but unfortunately we, we, we had so much stuff to move. We, we, we bailed out of our other spot this morning. We got here super early. Josh forgot the decoy, so we sent him back to get it. <laughs> okay, I forgot the decoy. We're going to go just with a hen. We all talked, and we agreed that just having one hen might be best today. We moved into a spot where we just keep seeing them always go. It's almost like deer on the, the tactic we're using today. So we found them. I mean, literally, I'm called it the turkey trail, man. They all went to this spot. Doyle thinks that they're just shading up over here, so... Exactly. Well, not a hundred percent exactly, or we'd have a dead bird, right? But I mean, we literally got this blind set up. They flew down off the roost, and they couldn't have been more than thirty yards from us. They came as close as fifteen, but there's this deadfall right here, and they didn't. They didn't clear it. But honestly, by design, we didn't think that they were roosting right here. We just kept seeing them coming back over to this spot. So we know we're in good shape. We're just gonna have to sit them out. If it takes all day, we're in for the long game. It's our last day here in Kansas, so. <coughs> Guys, we got the three toms behind us. I mean, it can't be any better. Well, it could always be better. They could see someone who's not behind us. Basically, I've been vetoed, and we're gonna move this blind. Um, Josh has been busting my, you know, one all morning. Doyle's been doing the same thing. This spot is good, but I, I called it. I kind of put us a little too tight in these quarters. So we're gonna move out a little bit, get a little bit more open space in front of us. And these birds just don't wanna make the commitment to come in this tight with all this brush, so. trying our hardest to not move. The birds are right in front of us, but they're just in the shade, cooling off. It's starting to get super hot. It's 11 o'clock. I mean, I can personally feel how hot it is in this blind right now. They're hot too. We got three gamblers out there, about four hens, and they all went in the shade. So we're trying to figure out if we can get out of here or if we're just gonna get stuck here.
It's 12.30. We've been in this blind since about 4.45, 5 o'clock, something like that. I'm here. <laughs> I feel like I'm bowling with a bedded buck. We literally have three bedded toms. Two off my left shoulder here. And one straight in front of us. They're both just laying in the shade. wanted to get that hen out of here and just go with no decoys. We keep seeing them crest back and forth over the spot, so we just figured do something different. We might have spooked the one, but we know that these other two are unspooked, and we saw a fourth one come here in the afternoon, so we just gotta wait it out. That's all we can do. We're actually going to do something different. We're going to set this camera down and we're going live on Facebook. We're going to give it a shot. So I'm hoping my bird is over there. If not, I'm going to feel, I don't know, what I'm going to, I don't even want to think about that right now. I, the shot wasn't bad. It was a little high, but based on what we saw, we're just hoping he's on the other side. So let's do it. We did it live on Facebook. So if you want to see the actual recovery of this great Kansas bird I got, you're going to have to log on to the, uh, our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash bowhunting where I recover uh, this bird. Man, these mosquitoes just got out, but awesome second Kansas Rio. I cannot complain about this absolutely gorgeous bird. Ended up making a good shot on it. Couldn't have gone more than 80 yards. We've recovered it right here. Um, just, a, just a great day. I mean, literally we were in the stand for over 12 hours to finally have a chance to get a shot at this beautiful Rio turkey. This will make my make it my second turkey in the last three days. All right, so I just got to make sure I got this clear. Day two, Sturgill swinging a miss, right? We yes. saw that. Sorry, and Josh. it was still his chance to hunt. So I mean, you know, so fair he had all fair. of day two, all day, day, day three. All day you're him. up to bat. Did you move the blind once or twice? I was just one move. I, I saw a spot where I really wanted to be. I put it in there, but probably shouldn't be listing the guy who shot the least amount of turkeys. That's, where, this is correct. <laughs> of where to put the blind. But they were nice enough to say, hey, Todd, I, I'm, I know when I get something stuck in my mind, I'm going to make it happen. So yes. it, we, we made it happen as far as putting the blind where I wanted the blind to go, but it was but not where we should have shoot. Been. So you moved no. it and then eventually snuck out and pulled the decoy out, which was an interesting tactic that I don't think I would have thought to do, I guess. Ah, I mean, hunting turkeys were... where they're just like at a natural movement pattern isn't just something you see a whole lot. Well, it was kind of like they were there all day, and there were two specific turkeys that we wanted to get, and we just thought maybe if we changed up the scene. Now, was one of those turkeys the one that Josh took a couple of tail feathers off of? No. I, I felt no. like when one fanned out, he was missing a few. No. no, but that's how we marked that one, but you're right. One of the ones that did fan out, which they called Cali Wampus, we never got that one. They're I naming would, turkeys? People name turkeys now? Well, they had, them, they had that one named before we got there. So. Fair enough. So they named the turkey. So then We also and, named one Longbeard, too. That's very, that's very original. Cl that's a very clever <laughs> name. So end of the day comes, 
You're in your underwear, from what I could tell. <laughs> or your base layers, I should say. It was hot. <laughs> I mean, so it, Todd's just wearing his underwear. Shoots a turkey, and fortunate enough, guys, for those of you that tune in, I guess, to the Facebook Live video, you're able to watch the recovery of that bird. And that one was significantly easier than the first. To find, yeah, no yes. more arrows. It did die one right arrow. over the hill. So six arrows, that smoke, three not turkeys. Smoke, but that, that you know, Fair dust enough. was my bird. So. Six arrows, three turkeys, heck of a turkey season, considering you hadn't shot a bird with your bow in, in many years. So congratulations to Todd and to Josh. Looks like a heck of a fun trip. Fun. I know they're planning on going back next year. So guys, that officially ends the turkey extravaganza for the spring. It's time to start thinking whitetails. Absolutely time to start thinking whitetails. But before we do that, trophy photos. Let's do it. Chandler Bing. Jason Mackey. Josh Baker. Brian Booger. And Trenton Bright. Hey guys, those are some great trophies. If you'd like to see yourself right here on an episode of Bowhunter Die, don't waste any time and make sure you send us your photos to either info at bowhunting.com or our Facebook page. Justin, what do we got? What's left? That's it, man, for this week. As Todd and I said, it's going to be uh, thinking about whitetails, really, from, from here on out. That's although it. although Tyler Barron shot a nice pig down in Texas, so we got oh. that hunt coming up here pretty shortly. But from there on out, man, it's pretty much white whitetails tail. until until Wyoming. That's what we're all thinking about. Come on now. I mean, it's June. It's going on July. Food yep. plot seed definitely should be in. If not, you're planning for your fall food plots. Antlers, I mean, they're definitely starting to put on some growth now for sure. I know yep. guys are able to definitely pick out the ones that they're probably going to be chasing this fall already. Yeah. So yeah. it's time, guys. We're definitely late on food plot work, but Tommy and I finished getting everything mowed last night. After I'm the, just letting you guys after get After the ready. monsoon came through last night, we got everything mowed, finished spring. So I think we're in a pretty good position. You good. should see our Heartland Clover plot that we put in last year. It looks beautiful. Better be footage than we, we mowed it. it. So, uh, yeah, all whitetails from here on out. Guys, get those trail cameras out in the woods, and uh, I guess we'll see you in two weeks right here. For more exciting action, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and receive live updates from our team members, as well as the latest happenings in the bow hunting and archery world. Be sure to share your photos, stories, and experiences as well. And don't forget to pick up your official bowhunting.com and bowhunter die gear by visiting bowhunting.com forward slash gear. We have a full selection of hats, shirts, decals, wristbands, and much more. Action. What can you say? This is our first day in Kansas, first morning hunt. Uh, we've got a beautiful bird on the ground. God, sorry, Todd. You got it. And, and if this morning was any, indi any indication, they'll be in here yeah, shortly. Gold camouflage for glasses. This is what you don't want to do. Try to clean your glasses and drop them in the dirt.